Hello, so here you can see that this screen is actually diagonally polarized in this direction, and the way we can demonstrate that is by taking this linear polarizer and rotating it. So if we do that, you'll see that as I rotate it, currently now it is polarized against the direction of the screen, and so you can't see anything through it, so right now it's acting as an optical analyzer, no light's being let through from the screen. If we continue rotating it, again 180 degrees from its original position, light will be let through again, and one more time, just to demonstrate this effect. As you can see here, we are dismantling a twisted pneumatic liquid crystal display. While you watch, I will give a short history of LCD technology. Liquid crystal displays were first created in 1965 by George Heilmeyer of the RCA company. His first display used a phenomena called Dynamic Scattering Modes, or DSM. This uses special negative dielectric liquid crystals, which are aligned to allow light to pass when no voltage is applied, and scattering light when voltages are applied. In 1969, RCA physicist Wolfgang Helfrich devised the twisted pneumatic liquid crystal display, considered today's current standard display. Heilmeyer rejects the idea because he says its reliance on polarized light would lower the display's brightness. Helfrich leaves RCA later that year because of this. Twisted pneumatic displays consist of twisted pneumatic crystals between transparent glass electrodes, which are then sandwiched by perpendicular linear polarizers. When voltage is applied to a TN crystal, it untwists and prevents light from passing through the display and appearing black. When voltage is not applied, the crystal retwists, allowing light to pass through and allowing color from a pixel to be seen. After leaving RCA, Helfer teams up with Martin Schott to create a functional TN LCD display in 1970. James Ferguson also submits and is awarded the patent for twisted pneumatic displays in 1971 and begins mass producing them the same year. They quickly replace DSM-style displays due to their substantially lower operating voltages and power consumption, taking us to the modern era of LCD technology. So here's the LCD screen. The LCD screen is made up of five layers. We have a polarizer, we've got a glass electrode, we've got our twisted pneumatic crystals, we've got another glass electrode, and then we have another polarizer in the very back inside of a plastic housing. This is the electronics here, and this is actually the housing including the AC to DC converter to run the LCD screen itself. So here's the backlight assembly for the display. First we start with two cold cathode fluorescent tubes that actually provide the lighting itself. We have a frosted piece of film here, followed by a diffraction grating, as you can see here. Next, we have another piece of frosted film that's not quite as frosted as the first piece of film. Following this, we actually have a piece of ground glass, and what's interesting about this piece of ground glass is the cold cathode tubes actually shoot the light through the side of the ground glass, which allows it to diffuse throughout the back plane of the LCD screen. Next, we actually have a piece of white film. Now this white film helps provide a reflection of the cold cathode tubes of any light that goes back through the back side of the glass, helps diffuse it, and then it comes back through the forward side of the glass again to help provide extra lighting to the LCD. The way LCD displays assign each pixel is with a matrix assignment, as seen in this animation. Since LCD displays have two conductive plates, the computer will enable two lines of each conductive plate. Where the two lines intersect, it flips a transistor, leaving the TN crystals of that location in the twisted or untwisted state. So to simulate the cold cathodes in the back of the monitor, we actually have these light sources. Remember these? And what we're going to show is how the diffusers change the image quality to make it more uniform brightness so that you can see my image better.